So again, Music Tech Class, we are here for another thrilling video tutorial by yours truly. And uh, we're going to look at some compositional elements to make some spooky, creepy, um, haunted house type music. And I have about maybe seven or eight different techniques that we can use within GarageBand or, or Logic to make something sound really, really cool. So let's go through and open up Logic. And we're going to do a new project here and we'll do software instruments since we're going to be using some MIDI stuff and on mine I'm not sure how yours works but I have the information bar open up along with library and then also this musical typing and it also goes back and forth to change the piano and this but uh, we're going to be utilizing this to help input some MIDI information so let's go through and let's pick a first thing which is a suspensible drone uh, that's used all the time in any kind of suspenseful music. So let's go through and let's find orchestral, let's go to some strings and cinema strings. So if now if I play the keyboard here, the A, that all corresponds to some sort of um, musical sound here. And on the bottom, this is really important too, the Z and X, that drops the octave and you see up here that the octave changes. Um, but Z, I want to go lower. Right, sounds really cool that way. And then you can do also pitch bends. My whole office is shaking now as I do this. Uh, it's great though. But so let's start off our our piece with some sort of drone. So let's go ahead and up to the top here. These are our recording stuff. So they. The red dot is the universal sign for recording. And over on the side here, it has the count in, and it's going to have four as a count in. That's just the default for it, and that's fine. And then there's also a click for it. So if you want to change your tempo, you can change it to, I don't know, just do 100. And that's just 100 beats per minute. And over here, there's solo, there's replace, and there's tuner and cycle, and different things. If you're not sure what stuff is, this huge uh, tool over here is the Quick Help. And if you just kind of point with anything, it shows you what the heck it is. Um, the control bar, the patch, this is the library, and there's all these other great things uh, for quick reference. So I would highly suggest using this Quick Help because it's nice and convenient on the left, and then you can just turn it on and off very, very easily. So let's start off with a drone. A drone is just some low-lying sound that just covers everything. It's a nice little blanket and a foundation for all your sounds above it. So let's do... Sure, we can do a click. Um, we're going to press the record button. It's going to have four clicks, and then I'm going to go and just do some uh, A and K, which is C, and since I'm in C major. Two, three, go. Alright, so I did that and I just pressed my space bar, which pauses it. Um, but let me listen to it. Why is it not playing now? Let me move it over. There we go. Must have started prior. Yeah, so if I double click here, I, yep, see in the bottom here, it shows it's prior starting. I need to have that in the beginning, so it shows that I. Played a little bit too early. So now I should play. There we go. Okay. So there is my underlying drone. That sounds really cool. And if you want to make it even better too, you can add a um, another sound into it. So let's do uh, right here a measure three. And I'm gonna add a crunch, so about half step apart. So W and O. So that's going to add a nice crunch to it. So let's do the four count record. Three. So let's see what it sounds like. Very creepy, right? Um, and if you want to, this would be super helpful is pulling up the edit window and you can mess around with this even if you wanted to add another one and 
and instead of using the pointer tool, I'll use the pencil tool. Stop. I'll use the pencil tool, and then you can also stencil in something over here too. And that's another way to edit your MIDI to make that crunch sound to it. That's just the one of them that I edited. So you can edit by recording multiple times on top of it, or you can just um, edit here in the transport bar. And let's extend this out. Let's go right to measure seven. Okay. All right. So now I have some crunching that's going on. Down a little bit, so you can hear me. Oh, now it's creepy. All right. So we have the suspenseful drone I can do, and now to make a new track, I'm going to hide the edit button here. So let's make a new track, and let's do click on the track name there, and do Command D to duplicate it. And I'm not. I don't have to make another string track, but I want to show you uh, another thing about footsteps. So. Let me go up top here, and there's another thing that I can do to show smart controls here. And in smart controls, it shows you the reverb and other things, uh, but maybe in the strings, I want to do a pizzicato. And let's take it off the octave. Right, you can play around with the pizzicato, staccato, the short. Pizzicato is when they pluck the instrument, um, or even a tremolo, which is a... That's pretty suspenseful, right? I'm just mashing my hands on the keyboard, and you don't even have to know what you're doing, but it's a lot of fun to mess around with that. But pizzicato is a great way to sh signify um, footsteps, right? Um, maybe they're... And then you go faster with it, or um, a good interval to use is the tritone, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, that was recording. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Six throughout it. So maybe if I want to do some recording over here, I'm going to. I can mute that one so I only hear this in my my headphones. And let's add some let's some locked foot stops here. So let's record top two, three, and I'm getting faster. And I'm just messing around with that now, but you you'd probably space it out a little bit better. And let's hear with this drone. Right, you can do some other things like that. Um, we also have, let's look at the drum kit stuff. Uh, no, I don't want to download some additional stuff. Uh, I'm going to hide smart controls. But let's go through. No, oh boy. Um, let's do. I'm trying to basically get a bass drum out of here. So we can do a heartbeat of something, um, orchestral percussion, orchestral kit. Uh, whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to keep that before the full strings. So let's duplicate this one and let's make this one now, sorry, the orchestral kit. Um, and I'm going to solo this one. There we go. And basically, I'm going to try to record something. 
All right, so let me go in my edit window, and this is where I can figure out where the bass drums are. So this could be like a heartbeat, right? And you can make that faster or slower. Um, if you need any kind of sound effects, orchestral is great for that. Uh, if you're thinking for something that's like uh, jaws, <laughs> skeleton, clacking, but their teeth, right? And there's a lot of fun stuff with that. Um, also, wanted to show you. I'm going to duplicate this, and get rid of the edit window, and look at some other things going on. And I'm going to take that solo off. Let's take a look at synths over here. There's some really cool stuff. Um, Soundscapes. And it also has pan built into it. That's really creepy. Um, just mess around with the things in here. Glass sky. That's pretty nuts. You can make some ambient noises with that. Um, here's other string things if you want to do that as the drones. And uh, another thing that you can do is make some sort of simple theme. You know, Jaws was just two notes. Right? That's just Jaws, but you can make some cool stuff like. Um, well, let's say. Bon. And if you just use that in some sort of sense, I like that. I'm gonna record that. Uh, messed up. So I'm gonna go back, delete it, I'll record it again. G. So I have that in there, and if I double click that. That brings up my editor, and I'm holding down shift to hold all that stuff. I'm do command C to copy it. I'm also going to paste it down here. Uh, it was E. Move it over here. So now I have octaves here. This is going to sound cool. So you can make the different octaves. I can even paste it again. Oops. I can paste it again, and then you can add above here. And that'd be pretty neat. So you can make some sort of repetition. A simple theme that comes through. Uh, another thing you can do is chord clusters. And then again, just that hits some, some sort of chord in there. Um, and then there's other different things that I want you guys to experiment with. Um, there's world sounds in here. You can do. If I make it real low. real low stuff, um, but I want you to think of the different ways you can make something sound really creepy, spooky, um, and try to use all your automation. If you press A, that brings down the automation for the volume. So you want to get things out of the way, bring them up uh, to highlight a new maybe sound or idea that you want to bring into it, and uh, really mess around with that volume to make sure stuff is playing in the right spots. You could also have, remember those, the skeleton jaw and teeth going, you can do that maybe the left ear or something and move it to the right ear with a panning. That might be kind of cool. Uh, so there's lots of different things that you can do. Just check the project page for uh, any kind of requirements that we have for this project and uh, raise your hand if you have anything else. Uh, be sure to save and best of luck. So use the suspenseful drone, dissonant drone, uh, any kind of footsteps with the pizzicato. 
and the heartbeat and simple repetition that's going to get you uh, pretty far with some sort of spooky themes. Good luck.